You know, I don't think there's too many bands out there in Auckland uh, or, or rather New Zealand who you can say are somewhere in between Sum 41, the Foo Fighters, with a little brush of Def Leppard. But I'm standing here with uh, two of the members of one of them, and that would be 48 May, here with uh, John and Captain Hook. How are you, fellas? Pretty yeah, good, thanks, mate. Now, look, first thing, Hook, I've got to ask you, has J.M. Barry, or the, the estate <laughs> of J.M. Barry, um, approached you and asked you to stop using that name? Uh, yeah, it's it's in the courts at the moment. We're, we're getting it sorted out, but I, I back myself. I think I'll come out the victor on that. Get the dot com, captainhook.com. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got a trademark that shit earlier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, now, um, one thing that's always um, interested me about you guys, or rather, I've been a little curious about, where did the uh, the name come from? Forty eight, mate. The name is actually um, a pretty well known street address in Hamilton. It's by the university, and uh, its claims went for me is that. Jared lived there for a while and that's where we'd go on jam and now it has like scorch marks in the letterbox and vomit stains unremovable stains everywhere that you know just as I went past that's when I like, said all the incriminating stuff so <laughs> it's nicely done nicely timed the May Street sign's gone now as well someone's stolen it have yep. you seen it? Yeah. I have, it has a, has a Jurex condom box as a letterbox now yeah. Um, yeah, and so I don't know. I guess so um, I, don't, I don't get much mail then. Don't get much mail. Um, Just very small letters, <laughs> maybe maybe French ones. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, pretty much that's where we'd go there and jam and hang out, and it's just, uh, I guess, really. Um, synonymous with us with like good times and you know, a lot of fun and stuff which is what we set out with this band to, to have and to achieve. Cool. Okay, who were your influences back then, and uh, like in terms of wanting to be in a band um, and, and, and do music and take that as your path instead of uh, a higher education and um, having money? Back then, it actually sounds kind of bad, but, but when I was young in high school, actually Hook's band was a big, a big factor for me, you know? We, um, that's right, mate. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know, just getting close to this, really. But, um, you know, they were loud. I don't even know if they're actually any good. But that one was really loud, and I'd play at school assemblies, that's, and I was like, you know what? That's the yeah. key to success, eh? If, if you're not playing too well, just turn it all up. Exactly. It sounds great. Yeah. I don't know if you can get it. I didn't. Loud. I didn't. You made me leave university just because of that one fact, mate. It's down. <coughs> yeah, but um, I don't know. Back in the day, well, we've definitely changed our musical influences. I think, but like, uh, I guess like that that comment on that web on our website says, you know, we're big into Foo Fighters and Def Leppard and, and some. Who, like. who came up with that? With with that with that quote. I guess we're all sitting around saying, okay, well, we need to write something down who we like, and we all, those are the three bands that pretty much we all agreed on, you know, no one else really agreed on anything, I mean, like, the Browns are very much into their, like, Supergroove and uh, Jamiroquai, yeah. and uh, those are the three bands that seem to keep cropping up, so we're like, you know what, let's just put them all down, mm. compromise. Mm. Fair enough. I mean, Hysteria really, that, that was, um, genius. Yeah. yeah. Genius. Are you getting it? I'm a giver. <laughs> right Amazing. There. Right Amazing. There. <laughs> Check out that guy's letterbox. I bet it's actually, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, now, somewhere along the line, you must have done something right because uh, uh, your debut album, Mad Love, went gold. Gold. How did that make you feel? Oh, really, really happy. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other way to put it, really, is there? <laughs> And then on the back of that, you picked up the uh, People's Choice Award at the uh, 2004 Juice Awards. Um, so, no, this is such a nice walk down memory lane. It's it awesome. Is. What else did we do? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, then, then you started writing some more songs. We did. Uh, one of them I'm holding in my hand here, the brand new 48 May single, Nervous Wreck. Tell us about the song. Tell us about the lyrics. Um, tell us about being a nervous wreck. Um, the song is very much... I guess I look at my um, various phobias and um, uh, neurotic neuroses. Um, yeah, a lot of the album, a lot of the new album, I guess, is kind of uh, a lot more personal. You know, not so much painted in broad strokes like the first album was. But uh, I guess with Nervous Wreck, we wanted to try and get music that would capture those kind of lyrics, have that really erratic, um, choppy music. And uh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. music side of it, and the same with the video. That was the, we wanted to capture the the contrast between the verse and the chorus, with the kind of the kickback to the 40s style sort of stuff, mm. going into the more kind of 
the, the modern sounding forest where it's kind of more representative more of yeah. Yeah. Mm. But uh, yeah, I guess we just wanted to try and um, expand our horizons musically and, and lyrically and everything. And I think we had quite a bit What would you say is um, sort of your most ridiculous phobia? Uh, I think it goes beyond a phobia. Yeah, it goes beyond a phobia. I am absolutely petrified of slugs. Really? They are nature's greatest silent killer. They were put on earth to torment me. I know it. I hate them. So, so if you were to look down and see a slug, like, what would your reaction this be? This interview would well be over. Wow. I, yeah, Shannon once, before he knew how bad it was, he had he had like a little baby slug he found, and he threw it on my hoodie, and I had to give the hoodie away. Couldn't wear it. Ever, Couldn't, yeah, ever, ever again. again. Had to had to had to give it away. Is there some sort of irrational fear that maybe it, it's going to somehow eat you? I think so. I don't know. I think maybe when I was a baby I was attacked by slugs or, something, or I was mugged by a slug. Or I don't know. But just for some reason. But snails aren't a problem. It's just like... Um, okay, let, let's talk the video for uh, for Nervous Wreck. I understand you both fulfilled a lifelong dream by um, working with a wee person. A wee person. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big fan of the movie Willow. Yeah, sure. And uh, I, uh, as I imagine many people are, and I just wanted to try and just really feel what Val Kilmer felt on that shoot. You know, he just must have been going to work every day loving it. <laughs> you just wanted to hug him. Though. You Wasn't did, it? but he was actually quite the professional. You couldn't really... Someone and do the things that you want to do a little, you know. He uh, turned up in uh, like a puffy fubu vest and these massive like spy glasses, and he was very professional. He was the most professional person there. Didn't really have a lot of time for me. No. Which, uh, which I don't know. I yeah. I emailed Val and I was like, Val, were your perceptions kind of distorted as well after the shoot? But um, no reply yet. No. So yeah, I'm just, I was quite gutted. He's quite busy. He is very busy. He, I saw him. Um, scrubbing through hot naked girls uh, in an ad somewhere. Not, not that I'm not, not. It wasn't an ad. It's not like I followed him around trying to make him like me and saw what he did outside of the shoot. But no, Hang in on, an ad. This is, this is Val Kilmer or the uh, little person? Uh, no, no, no. I've done my time in prison for, for Val Kilmer stalking. But no, the little person. Uh, right. uh, it was it was in a magazine and I saw him in a shower scrubbing two naked ladies. I found it in my dad's cupboard. <laughs> wow, this interview is really degenerating pretty quickly. Um, we better talk about we better talk about the new album. Um, tell us about that. You guys have been uh, sort of recording that for the I don't, how, how long and and whereabouts and and who with Puck, I understand maybe you've been you're the producer behind it. Yeah, we've been in the studio for the last couple of months. We've still got a little little bits and pieces to do to finish up, but um, we've been doing it down in Hamilton. At uh, Dotty Studios again, where we did most of the last album, and uh, this time around we've hired a friend of ours, Mike. He's been engineering it, like sitting at the computer and stuff. So that's that's been good for us because it means none of us in the band are kind of technically thinking about that sort of side of things. We're just thinking about the music, which I think has, has helped us a lot this time around. So yeah. I yeah I really I really think the songs this time um, we've put a, a lot more work into them this time and. There's a lot more ideas coming through and develop them a bit more, so I'm really happy with this. Uh, tell you what, fellas, uh, why, don't, why don't we check out the video? That'd be awesome. Okay, cool. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Shut up. You're on Enzyme.